All right, now that Vilu stopped, I know that most of you have already wondered how to build Gallagher and what stats you need to use him, what stats, what light cones are good for him, what, you know, what sort of sets you need to build him. But I, can I assure you that... All right. Okay. I know that most of you are wondering how to build Gallagher. Well, for now, I have, a, I have the answer for you. We go over to the light cone. Now, this set specifically, the one with this art on it, with Gallagher's holding a her leg, with clocks all around him. This will be his best in slot. It increases his break effect, and after using basic attack, it restores HP to the wearer by the amount equal to the percentage of his HP. Now, if you've seen my previous video, you know that Gallagher's healing does not scale off his HP, but it scales off his break effect. And also, if you've noticed from the official announcement, you notice also that this thing could be his best in slot. However, if you don't have this, you can get it for free in somewhere in Panacone, if I'm not mistaken. Either by completing one of the bird events, or by completing the gambling events. But if you don't have this, and you just need a quick alternative, this thing is not very good. The outgoing healing is nice, and the, and the extra damage from the outgoing healing is nice. It can only occur one time per turn, and it will be the same type of damage as it were. And most of the, you already have enough damage if you're building Gallagher correctly, which is by going break effect, but not going all in, because his ultimate is very important as well. So you can disregard having a 5 star light for him. The what is real works fine as well. If you need an extra effect rest, because for some reason your Gallagher is squishy, or you don't have him at E0, uh, perfect timing is great as well for him. It increases his effect rest, it increases outgoing healing, and it can only go up to your bottom in super imposition. I have mine at super imposition 3, so my maximum outgoing healing will be 21%. If you want some more energy recharge for it, you could go for the Natasha light code, post op. It increases it by 16% and increases outgoing healing when out using the ultimate by 24%. This thing is kind of useless for Gallagher. The event light code, the one where Boho came out, if you wanted to build him skill bot, it's fine. But uh, seriously, it's not optimal. This real sleeper, the real sleeper light cone, is this thing right here. Quick pro quo. At the start of the wearer's turn, it regenerates 8 energy for a randomly chosen ally when the current energy is lower than 50%. Now, you might think to yourself, it's just an energy recharge light cone, right? Exactly. And once you've done all your rotations, you can put it on Gallagher because his ult advances him forward by 100%. So let's say at the start of his turn, you do basic, you do skill, doesn't matter. You get your ult, and then you alt it, you know, inflicting Basada all, to all the enemies, inflicting them with debuffs, and then you, you have another turn. Now, this light code will proc twice. Once from whenever you use your basic or your attack, uh, your, whenever you use your basic or your skill, and after the ult, he will have 100% advance forward, and this will proc again. Now, if you win your RNG battle, you could theoretically give like 16 energy extra to your main DPS or to your harmony support. So the extra energy is nice. This thing, if you're lacking outgoing healing, if you're feeling like you're not healing enough, you can use this as well. And if every time you use your skill, it regenerates extra energy for both you I think it's for all of your allies and yourself. If you feel like you're lacking, this could be it. But out of all the 4-star and the 5-star options, I feel like the ones that are worth investing into are quid pro quo, as of right now. And then shared feeling, if you really need the skill, the skill and the energy regeneration. Although, giving a shared feeling to Gallagher will make him really, really skill point negative. And you, re you need your abundance unit to heal when they need to. So in my opinion, with the what is real is still the best in slot for him. Uh, you can S5 this. I think it will give you like 48% extra break effect. And then at 2.5%, at S5, this will be like 4% of max HP. So it'll have more healing for him. So that's nice. For relics, for me personally, I will, I will try to target break effect, but outside of my rope because my rope is energy regeneration rate because his alt is way too good 
to inflict debuffs all the time, especially for playing Akron in the future. This the energy regen is way too good. But for the stats, here, here I'm rocking two piece, two piece. You can go for two piece break, two piece speed. You can go for two piece, uh, two piece break also. And if you want him to do a little bit of damage, you can go for prisoner. You can also go for four piece, four piece if you're feeling like you're gonna break with him a lot, especially if there's a lot of um, fire weak enemies. Especially if you're fighting against the the IPC elite, the one that where he spawns all of his goons in one place, you're gonna feel like you're neat. You can use this to basically have a permanent uptime on your ult, so that's nice. But for sub stats, you want to make sure that you have the necessary stats that you need for him to survive, but also boost his healing and boost his turn duration. What I mean by that is, you want you want to target for survivability stats as much as you need speed, as much as you need break effect. You can see that my headpiece right now, I have three usable stats, speed for him, break effect, and also HP because he needs to survive the long fights. This thing, it could be better. I only have one of these, at the, one of these right now. One or two usable substats. And effect hit rate. Effect hit rate is useless on Gallagher because all of his de debuffs are non-conditional, meaning that you can go for zero effect hit rate and it'll still heal. It will heal them regardless. So I will try to make sure that this thing goes speed and break effect. This will be a tall order, but I'm pretty sure I can do it. For body, you want to go outgoing healing. And this thing is almost a god piece because I have one, two, and three usable substats here. HP, speed, and break effect. Ideally, I want the effect hit rate to be like attack person so that he can do a bit more damage, but it is what it is. And also, ideally, you want to make sure that you can get at least like 10% effect, extra effect res on most of your pieces because... At E0, Gallagher will suffer because one, he really doesn't have cleanse. And two, his effect res will be abysmal, especially considering the fact that his traces gives him, I think, about like 20-ish percent. But it could change, so just know that. And for my boots, the crit rate is useless on him. Defense percent is good because I think you need survivability as much as you can, so defense percent or HP is fine. Break effect is good. The flat HP, I, ideally you want this to be either the percentage, uh, HP percent or effect res, but it is what it is. For my orb, now, either you go for HP percent or defense percent is fine. Generally, I'd go for healers, you want to go for HP percent, because the more HP they have, the more likely they are to survive, basic maths. Or if, you want to, if they don't have any good orb, and you only have good defense orb, that's fine as well. I have attack percent here, I have defense percent here, I have speed here. So I got all my bases covered. Ideally, I want my flight HP to be break effect, but it is what it is. And again, back to my rope. You want to have make sure that you have his alt up almost constantly. Not to the point where you need to use it every turn. But you want to make sure that each time before your team go, your Gallagher goes first. Either with, either with him being on the first turn or him being after using his ult. Because if your team, let's say your team's at half HP, and you need the emergency heal, you can pop Gallagher's ult immediately, and then you do his enhanced basic attack, which heals the entire team, not just for himself, and you let your other teammates deal their damage, but also heal them at the same time. As for Eidolons, obviously this is not it for him. But again, E0 Gallagher will suffer. E0 Gallagher will not have the same uh, comfortability as, let's say, someone like a... Where is she? As someone like a Lynx. Even though I have E4 Lynx here. Because Lynx, by herself, a, a cleanse from us all. And that's nice. However, Gallagher at E0 does not have any cleanse. So he will suffer. Gallagher at... Let's say... E2, now you will have some comfortability, which means you'll have some more team options, so that he will not be as restricted as Bailu right here. Because Bailu, almost the same as Gallagher, does not have any cleanse on her skill set. She only has a max HP boost, uh, damage mitigation from 
her invigoration talent. Oh, never, not on her invigoration talent. On her, I think on her ult. Yeah, on her ult, right here. Easier Gallagher and easier Bailu is pretty much close because both of them don't have consistent debuff cleanser. The difference is Bailu's have way better scaling on her heals and way better damage mitigation on her invigoration. So that's a different thing. Now, I want to talk also about team comps. I have right now is my Barcaron, Bartender Acheron thing, where essentially if you want to play, assume this is Gallagher, and this is my Nihility unit. I have Wealth, I have Pela, and I have my stand-in for Acheron, which is Arlen. Now, you can substitute Pela for, let's say, a unit like Black Swan, because both of them have defense percent, shred, and that's nice. But you want to make sure that your both both of your debuffers would go a couple times before your acro or your Arlen in this case. Uh, mine, my Pela as of now is not done. Even though that most of her stats are a bit out of the place here and there, but it is what it is. I'm bu I'm building whatever I can as a free play here. And for my well, you can go for the uh the D DPS well. If you're feeling frisky, or if you're feeling like you can generate enough debuff to where you can go for him twice or three times. And this is my DPS whelp build. I'm building him with Bronya as of right now. And my whelp, luckily enough, is at E2. But even at E2, without having an energy regen rope, I'd, I feel naked. Like, I can't apply debuffs consistently if I didn't have energy recharge. But uh, basically... This is my DPS well. Is at E2. And this, as of right now, is my Acheron stat. This is not leveled up. The only relic that I have leveled up are all of my four piece. I'm using four piece pioneer. You should definitely use four piece pioneer. This is my stats. Effect hit rate is useless on Acheron. Defense flat. Always. And my crit rate is a little bit dog shit. Because this thing decided to roll two times in the defense, but hey, it is what it is, right? I think I have something better here. But if I substitute it, it'll, my crit rate will suffer. So I let it go. Now this one, I kind of got lucky because it rolled all into usable substats. I wish it, this could roll into crit rate, but it is what it is. Now, should you go for crit rate or crit damage body piece? And my answer to you is, just go with the better substat. Just go with the better substat. Just go with the one you like the most. The way I build is, if I remove the body piece, as of right now. No. As of right now, with my current build, my Arlen Acheron is lacking a lot of crit rate. And if I stack, let's say, another crit damage, so to make sure that you have your damage per screenshot, I have 37, 166. Now he will do damage, uh, no, she will do damage, but she will also suffer due to the lack of crit rate. So I got lucky with both of these. Actually, I don't got lucky. I fucking fish for this for like 10 with my 10 self-modeling resin. I got this and this is the best one I got. Or so this one, I got it from a uh, uh, relic run. So wish it could roll a little bit better. Wish could all of this could roll into crit damage, but hey, RNG, it is what it is. Next, speed boots or attack boots. Generally, again, you would want to go whatever your team comp needs. Whatever your team comp needs, you want to make sure that you're compensating for it. Ah, like for example, excuse me, you want to make sure that all of your teammates can apply the debuffs all the way up and stacking her ultimate. All the way up to the max and then have some left over for the next rotation and if you can do it consistently without having need her to do a turn then i would guess attack percent is good if you have her signature light go then you would, could make the argument that speed is better and you can make sure that she can have she could apply both her skill and her s1 and her signature which 
apply two debuffs, both from her and the S1 effect, the empty bubbles. And not only that, if you use her skill, or if you use her basic and the empty bubbles, you apply empty bubbles to the enemy, um, basically, they will gain more damage from debuffs, more, more damage inflict for enemies inflicted with debuffs, and they will gain more damage from the ultimate. And as we all know, Akron's, the majority of Akron's damage will be from her ultimate. So that's nice. As for the planner orbs, I do not have any other better piece in, for my inner cell soda than this. I tried to fish it. I tried to fish it. I have my relic runs. It, it did not work out as well as I, as I want it to be. So as of right now, this is, this is just a placeholder until I am either forced to use both of these, which by the way, attack percent. You, you need to go attack percent on this. Lightning damage boost. It's, it's a bit, it's, it's not optimal. Just go attack percent. She has, she has way too much damage bonus from her kit itself that you can for, you can go for attack percent and you'll be fine. And attack percent on this one as well. So ideally, I'm either forced to use this or I could salvage my five star relics and go for the new set, the the half and half, the Izumo Gensei set. So it is what it is. Okay, now that with that tangent on the way, I want to make sure that I show off some team comps that you can use for your quote-unquote Gallagher here. First one. Sorry. The first one. The one I just mentioned to you, mentioned to you the first time. This is Gallagher, and you have your Akron stand-in and your, your two debuffers. This will work wondrously. Ideally, you want to make sure that your Akron could go twice. But, you know. If you if you can substitute him, or if you can substitute like for example, her for someone like an advanced forward character, then sure, I guess it doesn't really matter, but you know it is what it is. Next one for our pseudo Gallagher is a break team. I'm talking about Gallagher, Ron May, Luca, or someone that you wanted to be a breaker, and ideally Kafka, where you can re-trigger the break dot. Because my Luca, as of now, this is not his best build, but as of now, his stats at 139, 162% break effect. So that's good. And with Gallagher's increased break damage, or his Luca's break damage will increase again. And I'm not sure about the break dot, but his personal break damage will increase because of the existence of Gallagher. Next team, you can go for a Shuei build. You can go for a Shuei. This is Gallagher. Your two Harmony Harmony units. Astas here is just as a as a placement for someone like a Branya or Sparkle. Gall Gallagher's kit increases break damage, as we remember. And Shuei's entire shtick, Shuei's entire kit centers around having the maximum amount of break effect for the maximum amount of damage bonus. You can see here toughness breaking. And this and that. So her damage, while being tied to break effect stat, can be increased if break, if you use her to break, with our Gallagher. An extra percentage of it. So that's nice. So you can go for a, either a break DPS kind of thing, like a Shui Yi, or the one that I have right now, which is a, a break Sushong. I have my Sushong at Basically, almost um, 74108. The break effect could be a little bit better. I'm still working on her. As of her relics right now, I'm using whatever I have. So that's nice. I'm using attack percent, oh, attack percent boots because my crit rate. He suddenly decided to go 10 on speed. Break the break effect. This this thing is actually pretty good because even though it didn't roll crit rate, which I desperately needed, the break effect thing is nice. For an extra damage boost and this another extra into crit rate and another extra into break effect so that's nice overall this is just some of my thoughts regarding gallagher i was i'm sorry for a bit going on a tangent regarding on how to build your primary team but to me personally i'm going to be testing both the gallagher acheron team and then probably um switching her up switching him up with fire mc 
because Fire MC. So I'm gonna be testing her as well with in in the Akron team because if you didn't know, you can go for Trend of the Universal Market, which has 100% base chance to burn the enemy, and this thing counts as debuff. Okay, but what's new? Why? Why do you want to do that? Trailblazers, uh, the Fire MC skill is a debuff. The taunt to all enemies is a debuff. And this thing needs 100% base chance as well. So you need to make sure that you're building effect hit rate to proc both the skill and the light gun. So in total, you will have three from, no, not three, two from Welp with resolution, two from Pela, and with Tren and Fire MC, two from her. If you can get the enemy to damage her, to damage her, again with the taunt, it's entirely possible. You can probably have like a two plus the enemy, and not two, one from her skill, the taunt, and then extra five more. So yeah, that's gonna be interesting. But for comfortability purposes, I'm gonna go with Gallagher. But yeah, that's it from me. Let me know what y'all think about Gallagher on how you're going to be building him. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.